another episode of Unsatisfied and Restless. I actually never really introduced the podcast when I'm coming in. Like, I'm that's crazy. I need to really like structure myself a little bit. But remember, this was brought upon by the idea of just recording good conversation. That's basically it. Um, we are unsatisfied and restless. We work tons of hours and um, we get it in and we, we stay positive and we try to motivate each other. This episode is brought to you by the good people at Chamaquito con Percha. Chamaquito con Percha is a clothing line and hat line that involves some really beautiful designs. I'm talking about when you see these hats, you're going to instantly want to buy one. Okay. Now, the way it works is if you want to get 10% off in, um, any of the hats that are available, the website is perchahat.com. I'm going to spell it out for you. It is P E R C H A hat. P E R C H A hat.com. You go on there. Um, there is a ton of great designs on there. You have, um, you have the regular snapbacks and then you also have the dad hats available. So just go on there and at checkout in the promo code box, you enter unsatisfied in all caps. OK, it is unsatisfied. Just how you spell it. I hope you guys know how to spell unsatisfied because if you're not, then you're satisfied. And if you're satisfied, that means you ain't moving forward. OK, all right. So um, we go with this episode right here is with my man Terrence. Just got out the gym. We just did a great um, leg section session. We don't shy away from legs ever. We was actually doing squats every single day. And then we kind of toned it down to just like twice a week just because of like the knees. The knees started getting real stiff. So anyways, we're going to get into that. Um, make sure you press the subscribe button. If you're listening to on Google Play Music, if you're listening to on iTunes, on SoundCloud, not all the episodes are going to be available, but... Um, because that's more cost, man. You know what I mean? We aren't satisfied and restless out here. So it is what it is. But tune in. I mean, thank you for tuning in. And I uh, hope you enjoy. We are recording. Oh, oh, my man Terrence. Yeah, my man Terrence up in the stoop. You know, about to do the podcast. Another episode. Hey, yo, Terrence. Thousand calorie shakes, though. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes good. Hey, them them calorie, them thousand calorie shakes to put you on the spot for breakfast. You know, and hey, we are officially sponsored by Shamaquito con Percha. What up, though, Terrence? Man, chilling, man. How you uh, feeling, man? How you feeling after that good ass leg day? You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling really pretty good, actually. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good after the workout. You know? We yeah, did man. Master, we did. Uh, What's the machine? I don't need the arc know. trainer. Arc trainer. Then yeah. we did some lunges with weights, without weights. Yeah. So it was a good warm up. So squatting wasn't that bad. Right. I mean, we've been doing it for 30 days anyway. So yeah. 30 days. <clears throat> I mean, excuse me, 30 days makes it even better because it makes it more easier. Yeah, that's it. Like, now you got, we got your weight up, man. I see you doing that 315, man, below parallel. Hey, look, hey, props, right. props to you, props <laughs> to you. Well, man, that's what's up. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I mean. man, because, you know, at first it was, it, of course, anything at the beginning is kind of difficult, but then mm -hmm. it's like, you up to three plates now, bro. Uh, yeah. I remember, I ain't like, I, one plate was difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so now you know we doing three growth and progress my people growth yeah. and progress we sit here with terrence just finished an awesome leg day and um yeah we just made we actually just went upstairs and um we're starting we're gonna we don't know when it's gonna be released yet right but we're gonna kind of announce it we are starting some, a cooking channel mm -hmm, exactly. on youtube on youtube everybody subscribe to when we come up with yeah. everything we're definitely gonna let you know when it is and subscribe to the channel we come up with a cooking channel we might be making some things off of uh, Eat This Much app to show you how easy it is yep. to do it and, you know, measure your macros and everything's going to be measured because we working out. So yeah. it has to be portioned correctly and yep. measurements and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a, it's going to be a healthy uh, cooking channel. Actually, no, man, you never know. You just throw everything yeah. up in there. You know what I mean? But, you know, exactly. we, the thing is. Me personally, I didn't know how to cook till like a few months ago, maybe a year ago. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like boom, and now I'm making all types of stuff. But you, my man Terrence, is like chefing yeah. it up, making it happen <laughs> in the kitchen. You know, I mean, learn how to cook basically for me because I used to work at uh, Charles University at the, one of the dining halls. Okay, so I was around 
cooking and stuff like that. So yeah. I would just see like the cooks and I would, when they would make stuff, I'd be like, well, how you make that? And they would tell me how to make it or write it in their recipe and I would just file and I would make it at home. So that's how I also nice. learned how to do it. Like I said, you cooking. had that hands on experience. Exactly. Like I, like I eat different than other people when I was hanging with, they would always like go to the curry. I'll get four wings and fries. I might get chicken and broccoli. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I like vegetables. Like, I don't, I'm not going to eat no chicken and french fries all day. Not oh, so you chicken. just naturally like the greens. Yeah, I like I like vegetables. Okay. Yeah, I like vegetables. My grandma was, used to give me vegetables when I was younger. So, yeah. like, we never ate, like, a bunch of McDonald's. Like, my grandma, what she would do is, like, like during the week, you eat. And yeah. Hey, on, like, maybe on Friday, you would eat out. Yeah. That's how it was. Oh, it's so like one day a week type of thing, and then every other day is... Um, uh, every, okay. right, cook. Cook, cook, so I was brought up different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no you know doubt. Saying, so. We, we, on the other hand, we never really went out, so it was just like my mom just fucking cooked every yeah, single day. Yeah, which is yeah. better. That's better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Why you gonna keep giving McDonald's or whoever else your money? Then that food is terrible for you. Yeah, man. You ever seen that movie Super Size Me? Yeah, I did. I did. Man. <laughs> Super Size Me made me never eat McDonald's again. Man, that joke was crazy. Yeah. I watched it one time. I think it was on Netflix. Yeah, and I was like, ah. now, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm lying. Yeah, like I can't just say I never ate McDonald's again, yeah. but like worst case scenarios, I'm on the move, the quickest possible thing. You hungry? You gotta, you know. Unfortunately, you yeah, should never yeah. do that. You know, I'd rather stop by like not even not even a gas station, but like a granola bar might be way better. You know what I mean? Or getting one of the Kellogg's bars or something like exactly, that exactly. might be a lot better. Or, or even a protein shake, even though that's just like three dollars and fifty cent for a, a man, couple they ounces. And they expensive. They are expensive. They, well, they seven dollars at goals. Yeah, they are. But they I are. Got, you know, I get the fifty percent, but three yeah. fifty, three fifty still is a little. Yeah, no, that's how much it usually runs. Like if you go to a gas station, Royal Farms, or you go to a Wild so they just taxing. At the yeah, gym, the yeah. Gym. Basically, what they're doing is, I guess, if you don't have the premium membership, then you know, you gotta pay seven dollars, eight pay dollars, a lot more. Mm. I mean, you gotta make their bread. You know, it is what they it making is. bread. <laughs> Regardless, shit, I don't know, man. Sometimes when the machines is not on point. I'll be like, yeah. uh, you know, hey, sh- shout out to Goals Gym for holding us down. But at the same time, man, y'all need to step y'all game up. I'm telling you, they just emailed me a survey the other day, and I gave my guys. When you get surveys. I don't know if our voice really matters, but put your voice out there. Like, I, I put my voice out on Twitter, and I get free stuff because, yo, I'll be complaining about things. But anyways, I put the survey. I gave him my real, like, yo, you guys need to fix these machines. You need to get some ventilation in the sh- in, the, in the bathrooms. Make sure the showers are cleaned every single day. I shower in there. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want it. I don't want to tell you what I just seen today in the gym when I was on the treadmill. <laughs> yeah. You want to know? what you see? A mouse ran across the floor. A mouse? And I was on the treadmill. Oh, shit. You know how you walk down and leave? A mouse yeah. Went, I had my, because you know, like when something moved, your yeah, eye just, I look, it ran around it. I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> he just, he just I said, hell it. no. Yeah, I said, I ain't put my bag on the floor no more. Oh, man. It ran, it ran down the aisle because I was, I'm walking, I just, something just caught it. I just see it moving like, what the hell? <laughs> Rent a mouse. I've got to tell you, yeah, just Damn. today, before you came out. I mean, I'm from the project, so like, I'm I mean, I ain't scared <laughs> of mice, but I'm just saying, it's, in a place like that, it's just. You show sure turns? <laughs> mice? Check it out. This is a fact. The mm-hmm. mouse is more scared of you than you scared of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I hate people be like, ah, oh, mouse. I'm like, a mouse, he's scared of you. Right. Now, a yeah. rat, something different. If you corner a rat, they're going to bite you. Yeah. But a mouse, nah. They'll right. defend themselves. No, nah, but that's any, like, any type of species if they, you know, they, they they facing a threat they will react but i mean i don't know like i don't know what the fuck a mouse is doing inside a gym because there's yeah. no food for it to right, eat right exactly really. i don't I mean, know where it came from i mean yeah. the people coming there clean up is not dirty yeah the people were there when we there yeah so maybe it snuck out somebody bag <laughs> <laughs> snuck out of somebody's gym bag yeah. that's damn. what i was thinking i was like oh no 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 Hell I, mean, no. I seen you, you you got the little flies they like um they they look like fruit flies mm-hmm. they be in the bathroom sometimes I definitely catch them in there I don't know where they come from mm. I don't know if it's growing out of bacteria or something but it, you know mm. it is what it is them little tiny things they don't really bother me like you know what I mean it's just yeah. whatever them things ain't gonna bite me and I just yeah. kill them when I see them like I'm sorry R.I.P. Splat <laughs> yeah exactly 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 word, word. but yeah, Ghost Jim is Ghost Jim is alright man yeah. I'm holding this down I like the culture now man you know what yeah. I mean yeah, you get to meet people. Yeah, because everybody, when when you go consistently to the gym, you'll find that there's a whole bunch of other people that go consistently to the gym. And then if you go around the same time, then usually they there at the same time. Mm-hmm. You see each other all the time. You can't but not like see each other. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then eventually, hey, how you doing? What's up? Boom, right. boom, boom. Might not know their names, but you yeah. speak, you'll speak to them. Yeah, you yeah. say what up, give them a head nod, give them a pound when you're walking through. Hey, what's good? You know, and then we had a point where we just saying what's up to like a ton of people. When yeah, because everybody, everybody's there in the morning. It's yeah. like, like, 
Cheers, everybody knows yeah. your name. Everybody there. You know it's, what I'm saying? It's like that unwritten code, like a respect. Like, yo, you getting up at 5 30, 6 a.m., just like I am. You know what I mean? Shout outs to you. Boom. And then, you know. I just explained that to somebody that um, I work with. They was like, yeah. she's like, I can't get up in the morning at 6 o'clock. And I was like, okay. She was like, um, what did she say? I said, I'd rather do it at that time because I know that everything is done already. Like I said, um, yeah. If I do my thing, like if I do everything I need to do in the morning, like a gym, right. I'm done. So now I don't have to be like later on the day, like, oh, I gotta go to the gym. Oh, I gotta, and I'm yeah. and I'm already caught up in what I'm doing for the day, right. I might not go. So I'd rather just go in the morning and get it out the way. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, that's that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for as far as waking up, it, it is like still a very difficult thing. But after that workout, you're fully awake. Yeah, you don't you are, even you need are. you don't need a coffee or nothing. Like you just fully awake. People need coffee as soon as they wake up because they wake up and they still tired or they still wish that they were I like don't drink coffee. let me get a couple more hours in bed, a couple more minutes in bed. You know, they hit yeah. the snooze button, they wake up, they're a little sluggish. Oh shit, I gotta go to work again. God damn it. You know, go boom, boom, get ready, and then you need a little bit of a little bit of caffeine to get them motivated. Exactly. But if you go to the gym, you really like, you can skip all that. Yeah, your, blood, your blood already kind of like it. pumping. So Your body's warm, blood is running, your heart. Dude, several times I woke up and I'd be like, oh shit. Damn. I push myself to go and yeah. then once I leave, I'm good. That's I'm, it. I'm already up. We'll take it home, take a shower. I'm Boom. Yeah, I'm, man. I'm up. I'm up. Shout out to all the early morning gym goers. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Much respect to y'all. Mm-hmm. People who do it in the morning. But shout out to people who do it at night. But when y'all do it at night, y'all do it when everybody else do it i mm-hmm. bet you all gyms across america are super packed around after 5 p.m it's like pandemonium mm-hmm. you know weight stone everywhere people mm-hmm. doing a whole bunch of weird stuff you see they made some upgrades in there too go they, to gym from, they, from downstairs somewhat yeah they changed it around they took the uh little floor thing out yeah the deadlift mat they deadlift took that mat, out took the put the uh, leg extension i mean yeah. leg press i wonder where they put that deadlift mat at because the other two are still upstairs where they used to be i so. got rid of it might have Cause I don't say no way Nah Maybe they took it to the other side Cause I'm, we don't really visit the Where the, the personal trainer the, side the, the personal trainer side Yeah mm-hmm. Yeah they could have put it over there Yeah but, you know, they, got, <laughs> they got rid of it I'm glad they got rid of it actually Yeah Not nah, cause it, it used to be a lot more Weights thrown around Hey people Please re-rack your shit man It's like a, such a huge pet peeve We just You know cause the, the, Where there used to be The deadlift section I mean you know I guess you gotta load the weights on Load the weights off People just left the weights Thrown everywhere Mm -hmm. Exactly Where that deadlift mat was at But now it's like A little neater So you know Mm -hmm. Moving forward But yeah man It's cooking channel man I'm excited bro It's good man Wanna Wanna get some Good recipes going then you know we'll get to eat it right after. So yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm excited too. <laughs> so guys, some stuff we putting with the name. Got to get the name together. Yeah. Uh, well, we kind of got a format of what we're going to do because we talked about it before. Mm-hmm. But we just got to get the name together and then find out the yeah. times we're going to record and how we're going to do the episode. So everything going to come together. We got yeah. the camera. Got the camera. Got finally. the camera already. Got everything we need. That's really the only go. investment, you know, as far as starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, it's the camera. Yeah, it's the camera. We had to, we had to do the research mm-hmm. on the camera. Research it. Found the perfect camera that was nice and, you know, reasonable. Small, reasonable. Boom. Got it. Ready to go. And it shoots pretty good, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It can be because, like, doing the podcast and then shooting, that can be kind of like a studio type of rapper yeah, type, yeah, yeah. rapper type feel. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Because you're here, you're recording, you got the headphones yeah. on. I'm gonna tell you something. When I was younger, I oh, you know what I wanted to be? What? A producer. A producer. I want to do beats. Uh, I don't know why. That's okay. what I want to do. Even like. Cause like when I was young, I'm listening to rap. I was into the beat first. Now, yeah, I, I ain't care about what they were saying. If the right. beat was trash, I'm skipping the song. Uh, like I would like when I had my tape. You remember know, tapes? Yeah, the I remember tape. the tapes. Right. Fast forward the tape. Hit. All right. Fast forward. Like always. always. Damn. Yeah. You know that still could happen, right? Yeah. I, I remember I got my mother one time. She brought me a keyboard for Christmas. Um, I never did nothing with it. I still got it though. Okay, you still got it. Mm-hmm, I still got it. Just never. Yeah. Cause I ain't, somebody this guy he was like put some program on my computer before like a free loop, but I didn't understand how it's to like. Very, it, it looks funny. Like at first you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I didn't understand how to do it. So I was like, man, whatever. I had yeah. I had bought a drum machine and everything, like a wow. little, little cheap one, but I had yeah. all that. So I just didn't know how to do it. Oh, or what to man. do. You, I had I had the had the equipment, but right. I didn't know what to do with it. You see. 
we were just speaking on it though. YouTube University. Like what yeah. we what we gonna try to do is teach people how to like make some simple recipes and like just know how to cook certain things and that's mm-hmm. that. But like I mean, you know, for that you could just go on and boom. Back then I wasn't on YouTube yeah. like that. Right. But now I am. Anything you go. YouTube, YouTube. You just gotta YouTube. dedicate some time to it. You know, man, you're gonna be making the background music to this stuff right here, man. And, yeah, it could be. It could be original. Yeah, it could be original original background music. Yeah. There you go. Either that or engineer. Boom. Something in the music type field, Okay. You know, but basically I did want to be a producer. A producer, right. Yeah. But the producer still has to engineer. Mm-hmm. You know, well, they might the have, I thought they had in separate engineers. Some people. Well, it depends, man, because the producer has to be so good at the controls and the boards and the sound quality and just maintaining that sound mm-hmm. that usually... Let's say like a, I think I don't know if a rap music no because Joe Button because Joe Button has Parks on the board, who's the engineer, and then you have uh, a rap music because Joe Joe Button's about to drive the rage in the machine the the mix. Oh, a rap music. Uh, a rap music. Does the his whole beats, thing. This whole beat. The whole thing. He's producing the whole oh, thing. From, okay. Okay. Most like you know from scratch like a rap music is a he's a beast. Yeah, I knew him from Cameron. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still there. Yeah, yeah. He was doing camera mm-hmm. thing when him when like when Vado first came out. Right. Cameron Vado was crushing it. Music. Yeah. Then he kind of like he kind of like fell back a little bit. I know he had got shot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he got shot multiple times. Yeah, actually, that's crazy. Was I was like, damn, what the fuck is a rap music doing? It was the Man. producer, bro. Like, <laughs> you Man. usually hear rappers going yeah, through that. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? Not producers. Not producers. No. Bro. It's funny. I don't know. He just caught up in the wrong space at the wrong time. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Just need to stay in the studio. Yeah. Work, work, work. Right. I'm telling you. Now, I had to engineer a lot of sessions, like, um, mm-hmm. and I had to be near, near the engineer for lots of sessions. So mm-hmm. I got to see a whole lot of it, and I got mm-hmm. to like kind of get the flow of things going i don't know how to mix or anything because once you learn how to produce you're gonna know all the tools right and Mm -hmm. then you're gonna know how to record the person properly and then you're gonna know how to mix the shit to make it sound like exactly how it's supposed to so it it comes with a whole bag of like if you listen to just blaze he was on um i don't know if he was on tax stone i think he was on tax stone he was on uh the breakfast club he was on something yeah yeah yeah, yeah, i don't remember but just blaze is fucking dope yeah and he was talking about the process, and he was like, yo, a lot of people don't know. Producers don't, don't just produce. No, they don't. They don't. They do a whole bunch, of, you know what I mean? Exactly. So they get full of, full of uh, skills. I like him. I like Just Blaze. He one of, um, yeah. he one of, my, one of my favorite producers is like uh, RZA from Wu-Tang. Ah, uh, RZA. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones because that's the first producer that beat that I really like kind of in love yeah. with. The first city my mother ever brought me was the Purple Tape. Uh, Ray Kwan, only, built for, okay. only built for Cuban Link. Uh, I still have it. You still have it? And my book. I have wow. my book with all my shit. That's my first CD yeah. my mother brought me. Wow. I still got it. That's my. That's like one of my favorite CDs. Yeah. Let's do it straight. I listen to it even today. Classic. It's, cla- it's timeless. Class- yeah, exactly. You can listen to it anytime. It's like No matter it's time. what. Yeah, so that was that. So I got like <laughs> Grizza. I like Kanye. Um, well, yeah, a lot of like, I like Easy Mo B from when he used to do stuff yeah. with Biggie. A lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, a lot of them, because they sample old music. Right. I like old music. Like, if I hear a song and it's sample, like an old song, right. I'll, and I don't know the song, I'll, like, Google, like, what's, who sampled this? What's, and I find the original song. Uh, and the original song is not far off of the rap song. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah, they yeah. make it sound a lot, but exactly. you just add the drums to it and yeah, everything else. Yeah, exactly. So, mm. you know, that was my thing. I wanted to be producer. Wow. Mm-hmm. The first, the first tape I ever got, because my parents, my parents are uh, Dominican, so they never really listen to hip hop. Like, and I was the first one out of my whole, probably my whole tree that was just like stepping away from the Spanish music. Because I mean, we were brought up in Brooklyn, so to yeah, me, oh yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So my first tape that I purchased was DMX. It's dark and hell is hot. I remember when that came out. And I think it was the bootleg version, like I just because it was a tape. Yeah, you know, and I think they just used to reproduce the tapes and have the little, sh- the little shitty print on the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. I remember when that came out because when that came. Out, I was living in the projects, living in Perkins, Perkins Homes, uh-huh. and me and my friend we was on the, we used to sit on the steps with the radio. Uh-huh. He had got it, but he didn't tell me he got it. He was like, "Man, I got." He told me it was something else. Yeah. So he put it on. He played it. That's when he the Rough Rider anthem. Yeah, uh, yeah. That came yeah. out, man. We used to sit on the porch. We used to bump. <laughs> we used to mm. bump that tape back and forth. That even when Master Pendum was out, like No Limit, when that came out, yeah. Used, it's a DJ used to live around there. He used to do like mixtapes. This before mixtapes even came out. He used uh, to do mixtapes. He had his own record. He would charge us five dollars for a tape. Okay. We would go give him five dollars. He'd go in there, you know, whip it up. He'd be like, "Man, give me like an hour or so." He go in there and make it straight from scratch. Wow. Record it. Give us a tape. Give him five dollars. Tape. I'm talking mix. I didn't even know who DJ Clue was. None of them. He was wow. doing the project. 
So he was one name was DJ Gazark. He had like um, house parties in the projects, and he would DJ because okay. you had two DJs. Like you had uh, Gazark was like from Perkins. You had another one called DJ Money. He was from like the Flag House, which is down the street. They had the high rise. They okay, got knocked down now. They used to DJ. Wow, in the, in the area, like the house parties and stuff. Damn. Yeah, five dollars, and he used to make me scratch. He said, "Give me like an hour and a half. You go in the house." <laughs> Shout you out know? to him. He's, yeah. he's still active. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with. I, ever since I moved, I ain't heard nothing about it. I'm from him more about him, so right, I'm pretty right. sure he's still alive and all that. But I don't yeah. know. You know what he's doing? Yeah, okay. we used to make them joints. Yeah, damn. damn. Yeah, the real, real, real mixtape. Real mixtape. You talking about? Man, can we? Man, we go towards the door. Knock, knock on his door. Mm-mm-mm. Man, what's up, man? We trying to get it. All right, man. Give me about an hour and a half. Boom. Whip it up. Wow. That's pretty dope, man. I actually would have like loved to watch him. You know what I mean? Mix it up. It up, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Real, DJ, that's another thing I like to do too. DJ, right? I remember I had the DJ Pro app on my phone. I used to like. I mixed one time, yeah, because you could take your songs, your songs off your library, uh-huh. and I was on that, you know, yeah, and I put my own little mix together and all that, like wow. playing around with it, yeah, yeah, man. Look, yeah. I didn't know you had a passion for any of this stuff. Yeah, I like DJ. Yeah, okay. yeah, I like DJ. I like, I like beats. Yeah, I like music. Damn, yeah, man, you yeah. should really like look into that. Like, that would be dope, man, for yeah. real. My friend, he uh, he DJ, but he um, he DJ like uh. Like parties here and there. Okay. He don't have like a set thing. Cause when I had my daughter have a full birthday party, yeah. I booked him to DJ. Cause he be asking me sometimes, like, what's how to I'll be telling him, like, yeah, this is that. Or he asked me about certain songs. Cause I don't know if he, like, I think he just DJs to DJ. I don't know if he, like, is like, a passion for it or behind it. Passion. Or oh, he know like, all the music and stuff like that. Cause he asked me, man, you heard about, I said, yeah, man, I heard about, cause I be knowing the music. Right. You know, you ask me, yeah, I'll tell you what's what, what's that. Right. But and I asked him, you still DJ? He be like, uh, yeah, sometimes he getting gigs here and there because he drive uh, for the Metro bus in DC. Okay. So he busy doing that, you know. So I mean, he's successful, but he was DJing like here and there. He had like a set place. He wanted to get a set place, but I guess he's still working on it. Right. But yeah. Nah, man, that's what's up. You got that side, that side passion, you know, to mm-hmm. keep that going. The plan B just still makes you happy. But I mean, I, I really think you should pursue that. Like right now, I'm gonna teach you like whatever I know for the for the shooting on the camera. So you gonna boom mm-hmm. have that down packed, then mm-hmm. you know how to mind. And then editing, that's another thing. Then you are gonna learn that, and that's gonna open the door for just photography by itself. You never. No, boom, yeah. nigga, you know what I mean? You're just going to keep moving forward from there. Yeah. I mean, uh, the end goal would definitely be to, you know, be doing our own thing, you yeah. know. And and that that, w- that wouldn't even be a job anymore. Yeah, Shit, I don't want to pr- work. <laughs> produce all day? What, man? Create all day? Get paid good and money. Get paid, right. right? Get them good skills, right? I don't keep a kid. If I was getting like yeah, uh, 10000 or something, <laughs> like a week or something for doing it, or, or 10000 a month, you know, that's more right. than I'm making at my job. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's indeed. more. Shoot, I could do that. Nah. Now, there's something I want to do. Right. We see, this is, this is that point where once, once you decided, maybe, look, I'm going to pursue this real quick, then mm-hmm. you stick to it. And when you. All your free time got to be, like, dedicated to that. So, like, yeah, grind out at your job, and we're going to hit the gym. But, boom, all the other free time is, is just spent on mm-hmm. trying to build the, this other brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. But I'm down, man. Shit, I'm down for whatever, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you used to do music, right? Yeah, yeah, so you know, definitely. You, you, know some, you know, like, some I stuff. I spent a lot of hours in studios, man. Mm-hmm. I did. I never really took it anywhere. Um, at the time, maybe even just like the podcast, it was more of a a passion. I just loved it. I just loved it with all my heart, and I love competing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With all the mm-hmm. other rappers in the room, and who's nicest, and who got the best bars, and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Who's whose pen is the illest? Mm-hmm. You know, just that feeling right there when it's like, ah, right, you go, you go, you go. All right, now it's my go. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. You know. My right. favorite my favorite spots on the track was at the beginning. I either had the first verse always or the last verse. Right. Either finish super strong or come in super hard, like whatever it was. Like I just like those two spots right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I never put you on a monster. I gotta hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the link to my tapes in this podcast. If anybody's listening, I'm gonna give them to you too. I'm gonna okay. just send you the link. Uh, I got three mix two mixtapes were completed before um I moved over to Baltimore. No, I think the second one, like half of the songs mm-hmm. were written in Baltimore, but they were all, everything was recorded in New York. All three of them were recorded in New York. But then I finished the second tape here because the first tape was really should have been the first, the, the last tape mm-hmm. should have been the first one. Okay. Because we recorded like 
my man, we had a, it, it was in Roosevelt Projects, 997. We had, um, it's just a little computer with a little, I don't even know if he was using Cubase or whatever to record. Mm-hmm. And it was a little cheap mic with a cheap stand and we made it happen. And yeah. it was in, in my man's bedroom. Like, you know what I mean? It was just mad smoke everywhere. And there was mad dudes in there. We couldn't even, some of them couldn't even sit down. But mm-hmm. <laughs> it was that crowded. Yeah, Everybody yeah. wanted to get a piece of it. We went in the projects, bro. You know, yeah. we wrote, we wrote like nine, ten deep. And then like everybody else like always saw us. And then we just became cool with everybody. And then it was right. cool. And it was just like this huge crew, several crews together. And, um, we did a lot of stuff there, but that's that's the melting pot where like my whole style came from and everything. And then I recorded one tape, I believe after like the whole situation broke up, boom, I did my own tape. I used to pay, I used to be like, Kevin and myself used to pay for the sessions, but mostly me. But before we went to the sessions, I used to have make sure everybody knew their verses before we went. So by the time we got there, it was just record, 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 boom. We'd take like a full advantage of one hour. It was $25. Exactly. And $25 was like hard to come around. So it was like, yeah. shit, I got to pay the engineer $25. Yeah. That was my man. Um, Damn, what was his name, man? I don't know. Shout out to shout outs to my engineer that used to be at SPMG Studios. I still got his contact and his number is still active. This is yeah. New York, though, right? Yeah, New okay, York okay, in Brooklyn, okay. yeah. yeah. And, and Nicka, near Nickabaka, we used to record. So, yeah, man, it was, it was. I, I definitely did. I had my, my run-ins with the music. I never really, never pursued it. Like, yo, I'm going to get rich, I'm going to get famous. Because like, you have a lot of rappers. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know. Like, I, I, I don't even like being called a rapper, to be honest. I like nah. to be called a lyricist. Like, lyricist. for me, it was like a lot different. Oh, I'm a fucking rapper, man. I don't want to be a fucking rapper. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, but we never really did any shows or nothing like that. Like it was just strictly just some, we recorded for us and we gave it out to us and a couple of people that we knew that really enjoyed it and mm-hmm. that was it. You know, so you never really like I'm gonna I'm shoot it here, I'm gonna shoot it there. Just you just did it just for y'all. Yeah, yeah. We didn't do no music videos or nothing. I mean, it would have been dope. Like even now to like say, hey guys, let's gonna have a get together again and let's like do this shoot one it. song over and do the video to it and just so we could have it because it's like. I don't know if I want to pursue that. Like, I have a son. To me, right now, it's like, okay, any way you can make money, pursue that. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's like, do I really want to be represented by being a rapper? You know, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Shout out to all the rappers in the world because that's my favorite type of music. But, exactly. you know, I don't know if that's exactly what I really want. Mm-hmm. If it just so happens, and it just so happens. And we recorded this conversation. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you know, so. Exactly. But that's what's up, man. I always, I always admire the producers because the producers were... They were the masterminds behind the track. Right. You can't listen to acapella. Yeah, exactly. You can't listen to, I, I never wanted to be a... I never wanted to rap. I just wanted to do beats because that's what just I like. To do beats. Beats. I could listen to instrumental, instrumental take by itself. Mm. Listen to the beat. Me too. Boom. You know, I like that shit, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what I like. like I don't just know. Just about right. Just let it rock. Yeah, because I know some dudes that uh, used to rap. One of them, he still do rap, but I don't think he... Uh, Doing nothing with it, I don't know, you know. Mm. But he was all right, but he's kind of like to me wanted to be like fabulous. That's his okay. style was like. Yeah. He wanted to be like fab. I'm like nah, you know, nah, you got to yeah, develop your own shit, right? Exactly. You can't bite nobody else style. Yeah, you know that's I mean? where that's where Switch came from. Mm-hmm. Switch, like the, my my. That's why everybody called me. Some people don't even know my real name. You mm-hmm. know, my name is Willis. Nobody knew that. Everybody yeah. called me Switch from so many years through high school. And it was because in high school, I had developed this weird style. I don't know how the fuck I came up with it, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, but I used to say shit backwards. And so mm-hmm. my first line would be like, da 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 And then my second line would be like, dude, like it, w- it would kind of be almost the same as the first line, but it would just kind of be backwards and still rhyme. Mm-hmm. So people would be like, what the fuck? Like, I just fuck everybody's head up. Right. And they were, oh, you switching your words back and forth. And that's how that's how the shit came about. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you a question. How you feel about, like, the music now, how, like, mm. uh, streaming and stuff like that? Because I know me. Yeah. Like, I know streaming and everything, that's cool. But I used to like going to the store and buying a CD. Yeah. That was me. Like, it, like you have release date, I would go, like, you know, basketball or somewhere like that, get it. When they come out, open the package, look at the, you know, mm. who produced this. I always did that. Every time I bought a city, I always look who produced what. You went through the whole booklet. The whole and, booklet. Okay. At the, each track. I, okay. That's I dope. Track, who produced this? Oh, they sampled this. Yeah. That's why now, if I hear a song and it got an old sample, I got to Google it because it's no, you know, a lot of people are not really buying the CD. Or if it come out with a song, like a single, yeah. you're not going to store buy a single. They don't even sell singles. No more. They don't. They you don't. Know, they used to sell singles. The CD singles. Yeah, CD I remember singles, those. Yeah. yeah. So I just go look at the book and all that. But streaming is cool too because yeah. you get everything at your hand. Like you be like, man, I wanted uh, 
Like, for example, you say you yeah. want to look up the DMX album. You'd be like, go to Apple, type it in DMX right there. Yeah. Streaming, straight to you, listening to it. I mean, to, to me, streaming was like, because I was, my, my first computer, I got it in the 10th grade. Mm-hmm. Had to be like, as I graduated high school in 2005, Makes me feel mad old. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I was what 2000 and, 2004, no, 2003. So 2003 in 10th grade, my dad got us our first compact Presario computer. Mm-hmm. And you know, since I got my computer so early in the days, downloading was just a thing. Boom, boom, boom. I wasn't that wasn't the Napster era. No, Napster was before that. It, Napster was way before that. But then Napster was still available, and there was other ways to still get music online. And I remember just downloading my. <laughs> And loading my phone up or whatever the case was with yeah. all the I like listening to it. So I mean, me, I don't, I don't have any memories of going to like a record store and buying oh, something. Now okay, I definitely, okay. I definitely have like this special albums that I had to go get. Like Reasonable Doubt, it, I didn't get it when it released, but years later I went. I had, I need this album. Boom, I got it. Um, there were several, there were several ones that I had to go out and get, but I never that experience right there. I know, I know a lot of people say that they miss that classic feel of going yeah. to the and opening and cracking the case. I remember, open. I remember a lot of CDs I remember getting, like I remember getting Life at the Death. Okay, Biggie, my mother bought it for my birthday because uh, it came out. My birthday was March 29th. Yeah. Biggie came out. Yeah, uh, March the 25th. Uh, and they had a store. They used to have a store called Charm City Records, I think. And uh, yeah. in Baltimore, they had a, several of them yeah. actually. And we had my mother had paid for it before it came out, mm. so she paid for it for me before it the came pre, out. The pre order? Well, it was it was pre order, but not pre order back then. It was just right. like you could do it, like you get your receipt. Okay, you put twenty on it. But she actually got me the double CD, so she like mm, I had paid five more. Double disc, I remember the that double one. disc. Mm-hmm. I, st- and I still have it. Uh, I still got all my CDs in the book. The wow. double disc, the biggie. Um, what else? I remember she brought me Nas. It was written. Uh, See, Nas was my favorite rapper back then. Uh, when I was Nas, younger, like yeah. at night, yeah, I used to like Nas. But then it's like he went away for a while. Then he came and he changed his style up. I like him back then more than now. He's trying to come back a little bit because mm-hmm. you heard him. Have you heard that song on Khaled? I did hear that song on Khaled. Um, I I purchased, done. I purchased the uh, um, Life Is Good. I purchased oh, life was good. Was good. Yeah, that was a good album for him to come back. Really yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Life was good. Was good. But I'm talking like after, like the ones before that, it, they were okay, but it wasn't like how back then. Like Illmatic, it was written. Um, what's that? Nostradamus, you know, all mm-hmm. those and uh, I am, I am, right? Yeah. So it was kind of different. Like that was my favorite rapper back then. Nah, yeah, so I remember all like I remember the Onyx, you know, uh, Mob Deep, like Mob Deep CD. The second one was that. Not Juvenile Hell, the second one with, uh, with Infamous. I think it was Infamous with Chick Ones on it. it. Infamous. I think it was the Infamous. I, I, don't, rem- I that, don't remember which one it was specifically. Infamous. That was... Yeah. That was I got on Mob Deep kind of late. You did? Yeah. Uh, I started listening to Jay-Z to begin with. Uh-huh. I really started getting into hip-hop when Biggie had passed away, which was um, when... 97. Diddy, Diddy made the song... Um, that was 97, 98. I mean, yeah, because he, like he died in ninety. He died in ninety seven. Okay. Yeah, he died in ninety seven. So right when that song was on Hot ninety, because I was listening to Hot ninety seven since then. Because mm-hmm. you know in New York that was a yeah one hundred five whatever. It was Hot ninety seven. So yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I that's when I really started listening to hip. I remember that first song being the one like yo. I need to keep like I need to keep listening to this. I like this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's that after that song. So Biggie, I got into Biggie a couple years later, like after he passed away, where okay. I went through all his albums and heard everything. And um I think it was it was definitely DMX, it was Jay Z, the locks. The locks was popping back then. I was huge fans of the locks forever. Um, I don't remember who who it was after that. Like it always stuck to an artist and listened to the entire discography, downloaded, listened to the whole thing, like mm-hmm. everything they had to offer. Then it was Big Pun. I don't know if it was Nas or Big Pun first, but they were like right next to each other. So when I got into that real lyricist phase, where I just all these lyrics just pounding your head in, and you just like yo, I'm trying to decipher it. Listen to the song five times and you just heard something new. Like, oh right, shit. <laughs> right, right. Big pun. That capital punishment? Ooh, classic. Oh man. That's a, I have pun. that in the house. Rest in peace, big that pun. That was classic. He's still top five of my eyes, man. Oh, I still big pun. Yeah, yeah big pun. That man. was that was big capital L. punishment. Big L. Ah, see, I didn't really listen to Big Ooh, L like that. 
I had to get it. I had to get it. You know what? One day I listened, when I had XM Radio, I yeah. think it might have been an anniversary or something, his passion, and they was like mixing his songs. Man, I heard some stuff. Like it was it was good. Big L was dope. I, like, I was just going look for him, like, what's that? It's like a freestyle. Yeah, on man, he was like, killing Jay Z. Like, oh, for real? On yeah, YouTube? I'm gonna check it out. It, yeah. I'm gonna check it out. He was yeah, he, he definitely was nice. I ain't denying his skill, but I just like never listened never to him. Like, yeah, yeah but albums. the stuff they was playing on XM, mm-hmm. psh, he was <laughs> Big L's words was his words was incredible when you put it together. Yeah. Oh man. I remember great. the music videos when he had passed away, like they were on MTV Jams. Mm-hmm. His music video was on there, like oh, that 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 goodbye R.I.P. type of music video yeah. they have for him. I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like he had a lot of artists in that era. He had A Z. I think A Z underrated. You yeah. know, people don't really talk about him like, but he's nice too. A Z is nice, absolutely. Yeah, A Z. Uh, who else from that era? Um, I listen to a lot of Common. Common. I, I did. He's I, not, I, so, I ain't listen to Common like that. No. Mm-mm. I did. I like Common, man. I ain't saying he trash or nothing, but I just yeah. said I listen to him like that. Right. Some people I just don't listen to. Some people I might listen to him like, oh, yeah, he was trash. I ain't like him. But yeah. I like Common is cool. Yeah, yeah, he can rap. Common definitely can rap. I just never listen to him like that. Like, you like you listen to Joe Button. Yeah. I don't listen to Joe Button. Uh, I love I listen Joe to Button. It. I never listen to Joe it. Joe Button's top five for me. Oh, for real? Yeah, he I is. I think he's a little off, For though. the record, yeah. He's he, he, he a little off to me. He is like, like I don't know, like his personality. He'd be like, I don't Man, know. He kind of like Button, the thing about Joe Button music is like it'd be striking a chord. I don't know if you got the like special artists that do that to you, but like you just listen to his shit and your face go like this and like. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it ain't Joe Button. <laughs> it's not I, Joe Button for you, but nah. yeah, man, he does that. To, it, it, he he takes it. He takes it to another place, like. You know, you know who does that for me? Who? Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel. That's who does it for me. And I was just oh, listening man. to I got a mixtape on my thing on Spin Real at 21st yeah. of Siegel Street. He had a freestyle. It's on there. Yeah. And I remember when it came out, oh, I was in high school when he was on. I, I don't know if you you might remember because of what you are. Mm-hmm. When he did a special delivery on a special delivery beat. He did special delivery, yeah. Remember that? Oh. Mm. I'm going at Nas and Jada Kiss. Oh, man. <laughs> man. That is a classic. Right. That is a classic. If, like if his you, his music is like so descriptive. It is very descriptive, man. Descriptive. I'm glad he because I uh, sh- shout out the Tax on podcast. He was just on Tax exactly. on. That was a fucking dope episode. Exactly. Man. He described how he, he got des- his style. Yeah. He said it, he got descriptive. And, it, and he wasn't lying. He said, what did he say? He said he did one of his lines of Jay Z song. And he said that you come out butt naked, covered in blood, gasping for air. And that is how baby come out. Yeah, yeah. He described. He the whole described thing. how it do. Exactly. He very descriptive. And he do that to me. Listen to me. I'm like, mm, like a lot of dudes from Philly like that. To me, yeah. they can rap. I ain't never seen a bull crap rapper come from uh, Philly. What's my man name? Um, he just did the mixtape with Dave East. His name Kerr. I never listened to him. Kerr, I, yeah, I think it was. I never listened to him either. But C-U-R. wow, yeah, they K-U-R, sound I'm they, sorry. they sound real good together, man. They they definitely put that tape. You got you, you haven't heard it yet. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's called uh, Born Born Broke Die Rich. Is, what is it on? Uh, it's Apple? on SoundCloud. It's on SoundCloud. I'm not sure if it's on Apple. It might be because it's all original music, so it might as well. But it was it was very it dope. Was good? Okay, yeah, it was real good. Check it out. Man. It was short to me. Like I wish, like it was so dope. One of those dope tapes that you wish was just like, damn man, he should have added three more tracks or whatever to it, you know. But it was it was real good stuff, so you gotta yeah. check that out. I gotta check it out. Yeah, man, we were real fans of music, man. I mean, yeah. hip hop, the genre, the urban culture, you know. Exactly. I used to like one of my favorites was Ghostface too. I like Ghostface. Ghostface, like I said, and I like Action Bronson because he reminds me of Ghostface, and the styles are kind of this. Action Bronson, Action Bronson, nice. Yeah, I like is. Action Bronson. He doing other stuff too. Like he got yeah. the, the TV show After That's Delicious. Yeah, they traveling, eating, and that's that's, that's the life. Eat. They just eating. Oh there. man, that's the life. Get paid to go <laughs> different places and eat the food and travel. Man, I wish right. I had a job like that. And then they smoke Shit. OD and then they get yeah. I mean, minus <laughs> the smoking, but you know, for me, but just going like. Yeah. Yeah. Different places, eating, traveling, Seattle. I like. tasted everything, man. man. Terminology, terminology's I, dope. I heard of him. I heard Ooh. of terminology. I think I heard of terminology. I like the underground hip hop. I had a uh, mixtape. It was um, Talib Kweli and um, High Tech. They had like a mixtape, yeah. and they had a song with terminology on it. And it, he was yeah. he was it was I, terminology and Roots, I think it was Royce Five Nine. Was I think on I there. remember that one. Yeah, it was real. It was a real dope track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I heard the terminology. Terminology is super dope. Um, who else, man? I love the underground hip hop. Pat Poose. Pat Poose. You ever uh, you never listen to Pat? Yeah, but it wasn't my. It, it wasn't was, your thing. I don't really. know, man. I his was, style was kind of. I used to listen, you remember the Smack DVDs. He used yeah, to be on Smack all the yeah, time. Yeah, he used to be on Smack almost every every CD. Hey, you remember the guy who used to be on Smack called Shay Davis? 
You don't remember him? That he sounds just, familiar, but I don't skin, dude, He's from New York. He used to be on shit. He used to be on there all the time. I don't know where he at, though. He used to be on Smack. Like, he used to be like, uh, this is Shay Davis and my gun go blah or something. He had like a couple. He been on, he been on all the Smacks. Mm. Shay Davis. Bro. I probably, like, if I see his face again or whatever, I hear yeah. him. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember, but. Yeah, Shay Davis used to be on Smack. Who else? Um... Oh, she's been on Smack. I mean, I remember Nicki Minaj being on Smack DVD. It's Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, she was better back then than she is now, to me. I mean, hey, that commercial life, bro. You I mean, know? that's the money. Yeah, that's what it's at. I, I just mean, watched, look, you know what, come and talk about her. I just watched Barbershop 3 last night. Mm. I got it off X10. Let me watch it because I wanted to see it. Yeah. And she was on that. They had her playing some old ghetto chick, like, you know, regular thing. I'm looking yeah. like, I waste my five ninety nine. dollars The movie wasn't that good. <laughs> I was mad. I'm like, man, I got my money back, man. Damn. Nicki Minaj, but she was better back when she first came out to yeah. now. But, like, she got to get her money. I don't knock mm. nobody getting their money. Do what you got to do. Nah, you know who I like that was listening to way before they ever blew up? Who? And, I th- and they still just as nice? Who? J. Cole and Kendrick. Oh, yeah. J. Cole, Ooh. yeah. I like both of them. I remember being... You remember His name's K-Dot. Yeah. You remember I used to put people on at the barbershop. They were like, yo, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Nobody knew who J. Cole Kendrick was like before. Like I was playing them way back then. Like My brother put me on with Kendrick, the, mm. Kendrick Lamar because he was playing the song. And the first song that I heard from Kendrick Lamar was um Ronald Reagan era. Ronald Reagan era. Okay. That's recent though. Section 80. Oh, yeah, Section 80. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was the first. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that was a couple years ago. But that's the first time I got put on to him was the Ronald Reagan. He got a, he got two dope tapes man one is called over is it overdose od it's called od Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that tape was amazing man Mm -hmm. i was like wow like before he even blew up just the lyrics that he had on there and some Mm -hmm. old tracks i'm gonna have to play that today man oh yeah (laughs) yeah that was real good you like anybody else from td td like uh j rock or abso i I uh, like all of them man scoop scoop uh schoolboy q schoolboy q schoolboy q is a little like I love his interviews and I love how he talk and his mm-hmm. personality. Like mm-hmm. I just think that's just dope because I like to know. I get, I like to like watch interviews so I can get to know the artist. So mm-hmm. him, he looks like a dope dude. But his music, I like some of it, but some of it, I just I don't I don't know if I can't understand what he's saying. Mm-hmm. He's just it don't captivate me as much as like a Kendrick or or my man um, Abso. Abso got some joints. Bro. I'm not hit with Abso like Ooh. that. I didn't listen to Abso like that. That's why I didn't listen like that. There was this um he did a freestyle where he battled this one dude a cappella. Mm-hmm. Oh shit, Abso is dope, bro. Oh, just listening to that, and you could tell he was going off the top of the head, and he was just just. The things he would come up with, bro, mm-hmm, <laughs> it mm-hmm. was amazing. Yeah, J Rock too. J Rock is hard. Yeah, yeah, J Rock is cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who else, man? Cold World though. Cold World is man. J fucking Cold. That's that guy. He motivated the shit out of me, man. Because he's hearing this story. Yeah. And what he went through and how he got to where he was at was like, yo, respect. He's not commercial. That's why I like him too. Yeah, Dollar in the Dream, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like. I like J Cole. It's crazy because. I mean, I dropped my tape before I ever heard J. Cole, but my, my first tape, the, mm-hmm. the one that was released last, was A Dollar in a Dream. That's the name of it? Yeah, that's oh, the tape. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and it came from a real spot because I'm from, you know, we're from the project, so I didn't really have no money. We didn't have a job. I, my, I had my first job at 15, but like, yeah. you know, still, like, the money was still rough, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of it. So All I remember, right. like, having just a dollar in my pocket on a daily basis. I would just make sure I scrape my mom. I asked my mom for it. I just needed a dollar, but. All I did with the dollar was cop me two Lucy's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that's it. And like, yeah. hey, ain't no more bread. So I'll make sure I leave the house. I already ate. So I ain't get hungry. And I, boom, just got my two Lucy's and make sure I use them sparingly, you know. But exactly. that, and then from there, I used to walk to the, to the to Roosevelt Projects to record and then and, and try to vibe out, make music. And that was it. Like, yeah. it was just the dollar. And then I had the dream and boom. So it came from a real, it came from a real spot. So that's why I was like, damn, I heard him. Uh, a lot of I heard what a lot of the fans do at J Cole concerts is they bring a dollar so so he can sign it. So can, oh, for oh, real? Yeah, that's dope because they yeah. know, man. That's he, all right. He came from he came from a real dope yeah, place, man. His story. Yeah, that's all right. I like J Cole. What yeah. thing about Fifty Cent? Like Fifty Cent? Yeah, Fifty Cent, man. I remember a Wankster on the bus on the way to school, uh, high school. It, it took <laughs> over. Everybody was listening. His mixtapes used to be crazy, and I was in high school too. Mixtapes. You still oh, listen to man. the tapes before? Okay. What? Shh. 
Man, he said all them, all them junior radios. Yeah, I got put on when Wankster came. So just like when when he blew, when he started blowing up, that's when boom. Yeah, yeah, that's what I start. I got put on. So then like Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks was nice. Ooh, Lloyd Banks on uh, K- DJ K Slay after midnight on Thursday nights. Oh man, mm. hey, look, DJ K Slay took over Hot 97's airways for two hours. Third, I, 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 I mean, I used to get minimum sleep Thursday, so. Once it hit Thursday, coming into Friday, mm-hmm. that midnight, boom, DJ K Slay, the drama hour. Mm. Oh, he would just bring up some of the dopest dudes out in Brooklyn or New York or whatever and just a freestyle and he'll play like all exclusive joints, no commercial shit. Mm. He used to play a whole bunch of like the street stuff, like the, the shit that just came out. That's how I got onto Papoose. Yeah. Was oh, like, yeah, that was his man. That was, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he was, together. He yeah. was, yeah, he was on with K Slay. Mm-hmm. First track I heard was Victory, Papoose on Victory. Man, I couldn't even sleep. I was like, yo, who is this guy? Yo, because he destroyed it. He just, mm-hmm. you come with some, <laughs> yo, you should give me goosebumps, yo. That shit was real. Because I remember that night, I was like, y'all couldn't, I couldn't even sleep. I just yeah. heard some of the dopest shit in my life. Like, it was. You so, know, he still do that. Yeah, he's, I, but it's not on Hot 97, it's on XM. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's on XM. That's it's a every better platform. I think it's, uh, I want to say Wednesday night. Mm. It used to be on Wednesday night. It used to be on, yeah, for an hour, the drama hour. The drama hour. But then, you man. know, XM is radio You can say whatever Cuss and all this so Yeah yeah So like, he plays He must maybe just play Everything uncensored And yeah He can do whatever You want to do So it's That's why these him. platforms Right here Are the best man mm-hmm. You can just yeah, Say whatever you want Podcast exactly. Say whatever you want I be hearing people Want interviews On different podcasts Like can I cuss They're like yeah man You can say whatever You want to do <laughs> You know what I'm saying Because it's not like yeah, a regular like you know exactly. family style uh, yeah. radio station. So. When I'm uploading the episodes, it asks me is it X, is it um, R rated or not? Like, it's it is it explicit? Is mm-hmm. it explicit content or not? So if I'm cursing, usually I do. I always hit the button. You know that means if you if you have an iCloud or or Gmail and you're under 18, it just it won't play for you. Oh, for real? That's yeah. that automatically? Yeah. Oh. It should. It should because, I mean, I think it should go by your age. So that's that's smart. It always asks you your age when you sign up. You know what I mean? So you have to verify your identity and, mm-hmm. you know, so. I mean, but it's nothing out of this world. We ain't talking about nothing crazy. No, but, you know, no. You, you know, but it, it still asks you. So if you see the little E, yeah. that means it's, it's explicit. Yeah, okay. I already said, I, I mean, tax, tax don't must be always explicit. <laughs> I mean, all, all the podcasters must be always explicit because people curse. Yeah. You know, as always. Uh, so, I mean, it, it is a grown grown man grown woman conversation yeah it you is you know what I'm saying cause right. I don't even think kids you know any kids listen to podcasts I mean they do probably? they do from a Benny Siegel episode he said the kids was putting him on to the to the yeah. podcast they probably was young boys that was like 18 years old yeah. which were of age he was I'm, I'm sure he hang with no young young kids yeah. like you know so they probably of age you know to yeah. do it but I don't know no young people I don't really know too many people that listen to podcasts period so I know you put me on yeah I swear I didn't know nothing about it I, I just used to see the app but I didn't know what it was right. I'm like podcast Podcast. Yeah, for those who don't know, um, the podcast, I mean, if you're listening to this, you probably already got it, but exactly. it's that purple icon on your iPhone that you always put away in the folder because you just know yeah, you're not going to exactly. use it, but that's the one. It's and crazy. It's, and there's so many on there, bro. I don't know if, like, I was just in the radio lab the other day. It's one of the most popular. This thing is top 10 out of the 100 list. Radio lab is really dope, man. Yeah. It, I be telling people I say listen to it. How you work it? Actually, what you mean? How you work it? You press the thing and you type in like. No, it's because it's it's, de- it's definitely different. How they get used to it, you know. Once, when you try something new, it's like what the fuck is this? You know. What but I mean? if you can search for an app, if you can search for an app, you can search for a podcast. Yeah, very true. Because go yeah. to the same thing. Go to the app store. <laughs> type in. Yeah, make sure you type in unsatisfied and restless and subscribe. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It's the same, the same exact thing. Like, I, don't, I don't understand. It's like, you don't know how to do it. You gotta yeah. learn how to do it, man. Yeah, indeed, man. You know what I'm saying, listen to podcast. I like, I love podcast. That's what you put put me on to. I right. To and look, now we doing our own. Exactly. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> progress, progress, <laughs> progress, forward, progress. Exactly. Sure. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, I'm definitely looking for that cooking channel. Exactly. I really am like. I don't watch YouTube like that, but I'm definitely subscribing, and we don't get that popping. So, you know, mm-hmm. put some dope things on there. You never know, man. We might just record some workouts. You know, we'll yeah. plan, plan a workout ahead of time. La la boom. This is how we do this, and just got it through and recorded and put it. Exactly. You know, we, just, we can't open just once. We can open three channels at once. Really, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So we exactly we just got to put that time in and all that work. Exactly. It'll pay off. Yeah, for sure. It'll pay off. You we, you're gonna get exposure or you're gonna get paid or you might get both. Right, right. People for know sure. who you are. Hey, you know you can put out your own tapes, right? 
What tapes? You can put out your own mixtapes, bro. Just by making a playlist and like, yo, this is the dope tape. This is this tape. Oh, bro. for real? Yeah, you could just make the playlist and you can actually share the playlist. Oh yeah, uh, on Apple, right? You could do it on Apple. You could do it on Spotify. You could do it on. You could do it many places. So like, for people that don't know, like, you just you really can't do that. Like, what what's OVO Sound Radio? Mm, like a radio show? No, no, it's like but, a mix show, right? So if you listen to if you listen to for those who don't know uh, on the iPhone, when you go to the music app, you have radio and you can actually listen to uh, radio. So Drake has his own one. It's called OVO Sound. When you go on there, it's actually it shows up as one track. Yeah, it do. It do. And right. it just plays straight through. But if you open it on the Apple TV, all the tracks are separated. Oh, for real? Yeah. So you, oh, can actually pick Apple TV. And, you can actually pick and choose which song you actually want to listen to out of that specific radio um, show. I didn't know. Yeah. So See, I, I don't use my Apple TV. I don't. Only thing I use on Apple TV is YouTube or Netflix. Okay. And in the movies, I don't never use like the other. I know. I know it has podcasts stuff. I, yeah. You know, I went yeah. Down, but I never. I listen did to it. podcasts on there before. Oh, you do on your yeah, TV? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All of your sound radio, you you put a mix or you put like a you just click the whatever radio and click artist radio and just play their music. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But it's dope, man. So it's like Pandora or somewhere yeah. with the artist radio. Yeah. So like, man, I, you could probably even submit your own radio thing on there. Just have the playlist. But you know, they playing like. New shit and old shit in the mix. Yeah, they are, they are. And they kind of flow, like, with this track goes, flows with that track, and then, like, every song that follows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, all the avenues are open. Yeah. <laughs> all the avenues are open. We just got to put in that work, you know? Yeah, I'm not trying to work for, 20, <laughs> for, 20, for 25 years. Yeah, man. I was talking to somebody about it. I said, man, I said, I just got a vision. That I, don't, I don't think I'm going to, I should be here for 25 years. Yeah, man. I should I be at a job for 25 years. <sighs> Or, you know, that's the retirement, 25, retired, yeah. and just like... Especially us from this generation, we're called the millennials, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And for us, it's like, they, we're, we're that next generation. We really are. You know, the, right. di- the dinosaurs at the very top are like dying off, and then the next generation moves up. But like, we're, we're going to be there soon, and we, we, we were that breaking point between the, ni- the, the, nine, the 1900s and the 2000s. Mm-hmm. We're like right there, so we have to. We're the next ones up, right? Exactly. So you know, whatever we can individually to to make some make a stand for ourselves, and we have to do it. Exactly. So don't be scared. A lot of people get scared. Yeah, don't, you know, a lot man. of people, a lot of people have dreams but don't pursue their dreams, or yeah. has something they want to do but don't pursue it. Like I went to my my, uh, my friend poetry event. He just spoke in word. Okay, that's right? dope. That's dope. Yeah, it was nice, nice event. You know, nice little crowd. So. I went with one of my other coworkers, and she was like, "Yeah, I do." Um, she said, "I do poetry too," because they have open mic. You, if you want to sign up for it, you could go okay. there for five minutes, do whatever you want to do, freestyle. Okay. You know, and they don't boo you. You know, just yeah, go up there and do yeah, your thing. You know, right. what I'm saying? she was like, "Yeah, I used to write poetry." I said, "Why don't you go up there and do it?" Nah, I ain't gonna see. Right. You, so you you scared? You holding your own self back? Nobody holding you back. Holding your own self so back. So you you wrote it for you? You wrote it. She said, "Yeah, I used to write." I had like a couple of them in my book. Uh, I said, "Next time we have an event, I'm gonna go up there and say something." Uh, right and he was like yeah go ahead you could, he told me he said go ahead you could do it go ahead do it I said what if I don't have a written poem I use somebody else's poem he said you just say OPP okay which is somebody else other person poem okay and I'd be like oh it's my first time whatever. he said they'd be like virgin on the mic or something like that yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> but I'm gonna say one okay. I mean I could write my I probably write my own little poem Shit, I mean it's not? spoken word yeah but next time you have a show and I go I'm gonna go up there for five minutes and say my Shit, poem let me know man yeah I like I, mean, I like that type of stuff man yeah man. open mic you just go up there and sign they don't boo you it's nice little people it was a dude up there right and he was like <laughs> He like was like doing some type of singing type. I don't know what he was doing, but nobody booed him. They listened to him. They might look yeah. they were looking around each other like what, what the fuck, fuck is he is doing? <laughs> but nobody was like, boo, yeah. get, the, get the fuck off or nothing like that. It's yeah. just looking. He was like, I don't even know what he was doing. He was just making a sound like he like that, that right? For <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and he was looking at my man, he was like, Man, he, my man was like, Man, he crazy. I said, You lying. He said, Watch this. He got on the mic. He started doing this shit. I'm looking like, what? I'm looking at him. He, like, he was on mushrooms. <laughs> and look, he did it. He did this shit and he left. Like he left. He didn't, He was the first person to go on. He did it like like he on some old Prince Michael Jackson. He did this shit and just left. And just bounced. Just bounced. He didn't even stay for the rest of the show or nothing. Wow. And he said, my man told him he always come to every event like that. He do that. He do the same thing. <laughs> Sign up. Do that joint and dip. Wow. I don't know what's wrong. And he and look, it's a five minute limit. Yeah. He be going over the five minute limit. <laughs> Damn, he probably go like seven or eight, but wow. he did that. Job. I'm like, what the fuck is going see, on? What is this dude doing? I, I wanted to bust out laughing. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. you know what I'm saying? I ain't. Everybody was looking around. I used to say, if you just seen a place because the restaurant, mm-hmm. you see, people was looking like, 
looking around and stuff, but they ain't say nothing. But he got off the thing. People clap, you know. They still yeah, give proper yeah. respect, you know. And he he left. Wow. But yeah, I said next time I'm going to a show. I'm going to do a spoken. Hey, let me know, there. bro. Where's that? Where's that? Um, this one was in D.C. Okay. All this stuff like in D.C. I mean, he had a show different places, but it was in D.C. Um, at Bus Boys and Poets. Ah, uh, Bus Boys and Poets. You heard I ate there before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bus Boys and Poets. Yeah. And the next one he having a show is in Virginia, but it's in Bus Boys and Poets in Virginia. Okay. Is I think might be on a Monday or something like that. I'm at the see and find out. But if I go, I'm gonna let you know, and I'm gonna do a poem. Ah, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write my, my own. I probably write my own little shit. Yeah, bro, why not? Yeah, it, ain't, it ain't. It ain't hard to yeah, put some man. feelings. It's not hard to put feelings on paper. No, it's not. Some people, it's hard to express feelings like yeah. verbally, you know, or you know, show feelings. But yeah. if you got a chance to sit down and write it on paper, you could do that all day long. Right. I could write. I might not be the most. Uh, emotional feelings showing type person you right. know with my kids yeah but with a person probably not or female or something but I could write it down right it's not it's not you know it's not hard you can still translate it in. yeah right sure. if I want to get my thoughts and my feelings and stuff out I'd rather write it or put it on a paper cause some I could say it but sometimes when I say stuff if I'm in an angry mood it might come out straight right. like that cause I'm more of a straight shooter right you know I ain't about to sugarcoat you know, certain. Yeah. You know, sometimes like, uh, why would you say that? Like, no, I'm going to like if you if you get me pissed off, you take me there. I'm yeah. going to just, just go straight at it, right? Man, I'm going to go. <laughs> you know, yeah. but sometimes if I'm chilling, like I don't like to argue, so I'd be like, okay, yeah, whatever. I ain't argue with you, but if I get to that point, right, I'm gonna just go. So I rather just go ahead and write it down. <laughs> I'm gonna write write a nice little nice little something to, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah sit down for the and ladies, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Write something nice. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, sure. yeah, that's some. Nice, like some dope people that mm. doing spoken word. I could just imagine. I actually always wanted to do something like that. Too, yeah, so. and it was what was so crazy is that we were sitting in the audience, and the people that we were sitting around was was people that was doing the poems. Like okay. I didn't know that. I thought like everybody was like I thought they might sit up front. Like I was sitting next to a girl, and they was like, "Next we got such and such," and she just got up and went, "Oh, she, she she doing spoken word." I didn't know. Yeah. She just went up there, and did her little thing or whatever. Nice, nice poems. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah, let me know, man. We in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. We in there. Take the camera, we'll record the whole joint, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, for sure, bro. Man. That was a good one. Word, I man. Like but hey, man, we gonna wrap it up. So, right, drop some gems on them for him. Come on, Terrence, hit him with something, bro. Uh gem, gem, gem. <laughs> <laughs> man. Let me say, drop some gem. major keys. I right, well, I give you a gem. Uh, don't let anybody hold you back from what you want to do. Yes, that's a gem. Boom. If you if you want to do something, do it. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't anybody let don't let anybody tell you it's dumb. You can't do it. Do it. That's a gem. Just do right it. Right there. Just do it. Just stop. like Nike. Like ha- Nike. Just do yeah, it. Just do it. <laughs> Hashtag stop waiting. Stop waiting. Just do it. Uh you could I mean you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah, really. You, you could really do whatever can. you want to do. People, I mean, we are we hold ourselves back. Mm-hmm. And don't let a negative person um ideas ruin what you want to do right because you could tell somebody your ideas and they'd be excited for you but as soon as like something go wrong or something they might say oh that's stupid you still want to do that stupid stuff you know right. that's how that's just how people are you know exactly like somebody told me uh told me man like if i'm going to gym don't don't go don't get too skinny or don't get this i said what <laughs> What, what you mean? You don't get, what you mean? Don't get too skinny. That's the purpose. I'm not trying to get skinny. That's one. Right. But the, the fact that matter me going to the gym is to better myself. Right. You should go. But of course, it was a person that does not go. Right. Told me. Sent of me. Course. Told me the gym is dumb. I the said, gym is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how did the gym? I said, how is it dumb? Which you? I would so got offended right away. <laughs> I did, but I, I did, but I didn't. So I was like, whatever, okay. But yeah. my thing is this: so what I do every day is dumb. But what you're into, so what you're into is dumb. What you're into is dumb to me. Right. But that, that's not for me to say it because I don't care that right. much. But what I'm doing is not like dumb. It's because I like to get up and go to the gym in the morning. How does dumb? Right. I understand. Nah, and then they like I go early in the it's morning. It's a foreign subject to people, so right until they get into it. When yeah, they yeah. start, once they get in this, they start losing weight. Then they be wanting to go the same right. way. And then they motivating other people to do it too. Right, so. people don't understand that. Yeah, they don't. It's man. Negative. Don't worry, man. When the zombies get here, you know, them them people gonna be the first to go. Yeah, I'm gonna throw <laughs> I'm gonna throw one of them to a zombie. <laughs> I'm going to toss their ass. <laughs> <laughs> he hurt. He hurt. <laughs> It'll be the distraction and you can get away, right? Yeah, yeah. I heard that negative yeah. brain flavor is really good. <laughs> Throw their ass. For real, yeah, man. man. Good gems, good gems. Yeah, good Listen gems. Listen to people, man. Stay away from zombies. 
And um, make sure you try to make as much progress on a daily basis as you can. And uh, exactly. stay unsatisfied. Get some rest, but still be restless. Get me? Exactly. <laughs> All right, peace, y'all. Be somebody to somebody. Be nobody to yourself. Peace. <laughs>